Israel, Israel, and back of part two. To the world, hate God and his son Christ and his people Israel. And we left off in Romans chapter one. And we stopped off at verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Like I was saying before, you know, this wicked kingdom, it allows us to do all these type of abominations, you know, which the powers that be know that it's against the most high. So they allow us to, you know, be homosexual. Um, uh, what else? Be a lesbian and, and, you know, transgender and all that abomination, man. Like I said, we have been programmed to accept evil. Even since we came out the womb, they've been preparing, you know what I'm saying, to, to blind the people, man. And we have been on a, a dream for so long. You know, that's why the Most High had to wake us up in these last days. Because we in the last days, he will wake his people up. And it was prophesied throughout the Bible. And that's we're in the end times. So the Most High is waking up his people, like he said. And the powers that be can't stop it. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, they allow you to do, you know, gay marriage, all type of abominations that's against the most high law. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and they allow us to do this stuff, man. And people have accepted it. And we laugh at it. And we think it's cute and funny and good because the way they presented it to us, they made it look good. You know what I mean? That's why he said, woe unto you that call evil good and good evil. You know what I'm saying? Put, um... Darkness before light and light before darkness because, you know, that's what this this wicked world that we live in, you know what I'm saying? We are, this world is satanic, man. It's very demonic and wicked and evil, you know what I'm saying? That's why he said he to have an ear to hear, let him hear. He to have eyes to see. Only the ones that have eyes to see and ears to hear is going to understand. The rest of the world, they go off for of carnalness. They go off the carnal eyes. That's why they can't see what's going on. You know what I mean? So let's keep going. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, right? Um, being being homosexual, man. You know what I'm saying? That's bad, man on man. That's an abomination. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we, we this is why we teach, you know, those that have been called to preach and teach. We teach these things that th that is unrighteous to do these things, man. The Lord said we are worthy of death. You know what I'm saying? That do these type of things and have pleasure in doing these type of things. You're worthy of death, man. You know what I mean? So that's why the Lord, he wanted his people to be strong. You know what I'm saying? And to be bold and to be not moved off of emotions and feelings and, you know, be solid as a rock. Because like I said, dark times is coming. You know what I mean? And you want to be right in your mental state. You know, you want to be right in your mental state, man. And you want to be blood, you want to be covered in the blood of Christ, man, the blood of the lamb so that he can protect you in these last days. You know what I'm saying? Because we know the 144,000, they're going to overcome the beast by, by faith in Christ's name and blood. You know, like Revelation said, they overcame the beast, man. You know, they know not, they love not their lives into the death. So we have to, us Israelites that's trying, man, we must do the same. You know what I'm saying? We must be trying to conform, be conformed into the image of his son. You know what I'm saying? The most high son. But like I said, man, there's a lot of foul stuff going on in Israel. You know what I mean? And I'm just one of them to talk about it, man. I'm not scared to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else want to keep their eyes and ears shut to it. That's one of them. But if I see something wrong, I'm going to talk about it, man. I'm not going to hold my tongue to not talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, let's keep going, though. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burnt in their lust one toward another, men with men, right? Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. You see what I'm saying? Meaning that they, they're going to receive what is coming to them. You know what I'm saying? People that's like that, homosexuals and transgenders and bisexual. That stuff is wicked, man. That stuff is all wicked. Because when you go back to the law, man, the most high forbid us to be like that. This is why he told us not to learn the ways of the Gentiles because they're unclean. They're wicked. You see what I'm saying? 
And I know a lot of people are going to get in their feelings about it, but that's fine. It's the truth. Christ said the truth shall make you free. If you want to be set free, you have to accept the truth. You know, you have to accept the words in this Bible, man. All right. The book of Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shall, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. You see what I'm saying? So this is why I say the law is not done away with because we're going to be keeping the law in the kingdom. Well, whoever makes it to the first resurrection, you're going to be keeping the law. You see what I'm saying? The law is not done away with. Christ didn't come to destroy the law, but we are not saved by the deeds of the law. This is what we got to understand. We still teach the law, but we're not supposed to be. We're not saved by the deeds of the law. This is why if you still have the veil of Moses over you, man, you still under the curses of the law. The Bible tells us it's only lifted through Christ. You understand? We keep the law through Christ, man, by faith, through the spirit. All right. We hope for the hope for righteousness by, by the spirit, uh, um, by faith, man. You see what I'm saying? It's not of our works anymore because our forefathers could not keep the law due to their carnal mind. So what makes you think? He, that's what he says. They have not kept my law. That's why he had to make a new covenant because we couldn't keep it with our carnal mind. That's why we keep it through the spirit. You know, but like I said, I, I got a lesson coming up for that. So it's, go, it's all going to make sense. But the Lord just says, man, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind is abomination. When you out here teaching this stuff, man, the world is going to hate you. You know, the Gentiles, even your own people going to scoff at you. You see what I'm saying? Because they, they, they're, they're happy with this stuff, man. The government allowed them to do this, this abomination stuff. Don't even know the Lord is going to put them to death when he come back. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't know the most high. They don't know how he get down. You understand? He hates sin and wickedness. We've been living like beasts down here and we just don't know it. You see what I'm saying? That's why we, a lot of us pass out of the world without knowing the truth, man. We just go get this straight judgment that's going to come to us on judgment day. You see what I'm saying? And, and it's real. You know what I'm saying? It's real Israel. That's why we, we must take it serious. You know what I mean? So he said that, right? 21. Yeah. So he said that, man. And that's what we must we must go by, Israel. We must go by that because he told us not to lay down with mankind, man. All right, the book of Leviticus, chapter nineteen and and uh, twenty nine. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see that, and you see today, man. Women is they became whores, man, because. You know, you got the, the so-called music industry and stuff, which is wicked and, and, and satanic as hell, man. And women follow these people, man. When they, when they you know, shaking their butts on the camera. And you see on Instagram, women half naked and all that stuff. The Lord the Lord going to punish them for this, man. They don't understand this is a wickedness. This is evil. But like I said, we've been programmed to think this is cute. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the woman body is for her husband, man. You see what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be out here half naked like that. You know, you making when you doing this, when women doing this, they making men lust after them. And they don't think the most high is not gonna punish them for that, which he is. That's whore. What did he say? He says in uh the book of um the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter I think is Ecclesiasticus, I think it's 20, right here, Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 and verse 22, he said, and harlot, meaning the whore, shall be counted as spittle. You see what I'm saying? So the, uh, the Lord said a, a harlot, man, is counted as spit, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. You see what I'm saying? Let's jump over to uh, verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he have found a fountain and drink of every water near her by head by every hedge. Will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow, meaning that she will open her legs to every man. Huh? You see what I'm saying? So that's why the Lord said a woman like that is counted as spit, man. Look at the majority of the women today in this generation, this last generation. They they're all like whoredom, man. They do whoredom stuff. Whores, harlots. 
but you think is cute. You think is nice and fun, but it's not. It's wickedness, man. You see what I'm saying? That's why everybody over everybody jumping from guy to guy, woman to woman. That's all whoredom, man. He said no whoremongers is entering into his kingdom. Right? The Bible says, and he shall gather out of all things out of his kingdom that offend. You see what I'm saying? Don't be deceived when they say God accept you as you is, man. You ain't he don't accept homos. Like he said, neither feminine is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, man. Religion has blind and deceived our people, Israel. Okay? None unrighteousness is, is going into the kingdom. That's why he said all that is without the kingdom, without the, that's not in the kingdom, are dogs and sorcerers, man. All right? We have to understand how serious this is. Like he said, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger, man. He will not leave off till he die. And that's true. You know, you're supposed to be with your woman, man. You're supposed to be married. You're not, there's it, no such thing as relationships. Okay, that is made up. That's fake, man. You're supposed to be married and that's it. Okay, one man, one wife, all right? One man with one woman, one woman with one man. Okay? But in the law, you know, we the, the, the law says you can't have two women. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, we got to understand this, man. We got to understand how serious this is, man. Our people is destroyed, man. That's why he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, man. My people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Okay? The Lord is telling us, man. The Lord is telling us to wake up because... The, the day of the Lord is not going to be no sun out with the sun out and everybody holding hands, man, and, and flowers blossoming up. You least want to try and show the Lord you trying, man. Because he, he ain't playing around, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, it's going to be welling everywhere. Welling all in the streets, man. People running all over the streets. Climbing buildings, man, trying to get up out of here. But it's nowhere to go. That's why he said nobody is going to escape the day of the Lord. You ain't going to no Neptune or no Mars, man, because that don't exist. You can't leave the firmament. We we live over a dome, man. <laughs> the Lord is a firmament, man, which we can't see with the carnal eyes. They not going to space. NASA and them is not going to space. They are leave. They're right here with us, man. They got caught so many times lying with CGI images and all of that stuff, man. They even tell you the moon landing was fake, but people still blindly follow man and follow these Freemason NASA people, man. That deceive us. It's all Satan, though, man. This is what I'm saying. We got to be real. We got to be ready, man, because you don't know when time this joint going to jump off, man. You don't know when. It's all up to the Lord, man. Satan can't do nothing. Man can't do nothing without the Lord knowing, okay? Without the Lord knowing, he says what goes and what don't go. He controls good and evil, man. Light and dark. He controls everything. All right? So, we don't know when it's going to jump off, man. That's why we always got to keep our candle lit, Israel. We got to keep our candle lit because we don't know when that day is going to come, man. And when that day comes, we, we, you know, the Bible says it's Jacob's trouble, which is the great tribulation. The whole world is going to be tried, though. You know, you're going to be witnessing stuff. Your mind going to be blown, man. It's why you want to build yourself up now so you can withstand what's coming. And women that's like that with the whoredom stuff, they're going to be targeted. That's true, man. They're going to be targeted, man. Because you got to understand, man, like the movies, they show us in the movies, like, you know, um, like, uh, what's that movie with Will Smith? Um, dang. That movie with the zombie apocalypse movie he played in. And you see like how the grass was growing up out of the ground and the buildings was rusting, the cars was rusting. It's going to be like that. You're going to have to be a pilgrim, a wanderer, Israel. Looking for food and stuff like that. It's going to be like that, man. It's going to be that bad. And women that's 
going to be targeted as whores, man. That's got, got that image of whoredom. They're going to be targeted by men out here. That's going to be crazy. That's going to be wilding because ain't going to be no food. People ain't going to see women in a long time. It's going to be real out here, man. It ain't going to always be a day you're going to go wake up and the sun blossom and the clouds is out and you're going to work. And, and you know what I'm saying? You could just go to the grocery store and get what you want, man. We're going to be out here scavenging. Whoever, if the Lord allow you to be here. That's why he said, blessed is he that is here. Because the church teaches that taken, meaning um, meaning left behind is, is, is good. So I can mean that taking is good. All right. But you want to be here. The Bible says you want to be here. You're more blessed, but more woe to you if you're here. But you're more blessed to see these last days that the Lord is going to do these wonderful works, signs and effects. If you're taken, that means you're dead, man. That, that means the judgment is appointed to man to die once. Then after that is the judgment. But if you bless here to see these things and to see all this happen, you're blessed. But more and more woe to you. Because you're going to see all this stuff, man. So that's why, you know what I'm saying? Ain't going to be no time where you're going to be going to, you know, getting chicken sandwiches and stuff, man. You're going to be happy for what you got. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I don't agree with, with our people, you know, taking money from our people, man. And charging our people for lessons and stuff like that. We already in a bad place, man. We already at the bottom of the barrel in the back corners, man. We need this knowledge. Freely given, freely give, Christ said. You know what I mean? So let's keep going to Israel. All right. So he said, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Well, we know we in all nations, man. And we doing this wickedness stuff. The Lord did not want us to be like the Gentiles. That's why he separated us from the sons of Adam and put them in their own land. And he put us and he separated us as his portion. But we, our forefathers, didn't want to be holy and separate. They wanted to be like the heathen. That's why he scattered us among the heathen. And he went back to heaven and hid his face from us and gave us into the hands of our enemies, which are the Gentiles. And they that hated us ruled over us. You see, but we became so comfortable with our enemies. You see what I'm saying? So it, we got to understand, man, this is why Christ said you have to be born again. Meaning you have to you have to let go of everything you've been taught in this world, what they taught us and be born again in the Bible, man, the word of God. That's the only way for flesh and blood is not entering the kingdom of heaven. All right. And the Lord is going to come and give, you know, give Israel that glorified body when he comes. That's why it says we shall see him as he is at his coming, man. And we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You see what I'm saying? Because those are the, the houses that the Lord have prepared for Israel. The bodies, man, that don't die. You see what I'm saying? But he's, we know he's going to give that to the elect. The 144,000, man. You know what I'm saying? And I pray and hope, hopefully us that's trying to, we get those glorified bodies. You know what I mean? So... We just have to endure to that end, though. You know what I'm saying? He's going to give eternal life and those bodies to his people, though. You see what I'm saying? And we just have to endure to the end, Israel. All right, let's go back to Romans. So we know homosexual and all of that and lesbian is, uh, being a lesbian and transgender, that joint is wickedness, man. Because the image of transgender, you're in the image of Satan, man. A lot of people don't understand that, which he's the male and female, okay, the Baphomet. You're not in the image of Adam and Eve anymore. All right. So that stuff is pure wickedness, man. That's why we can't be messing with that stuff, Israel. All right. And, and even, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, right, to do the things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. 
Lord said, man, people that commit these things, man, that I just read and even the other stuff is worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. He said, not only we do this, but we have pleasure in doing these things. We wicked. Right? That's why nobody can say they're not a sinner, man. The Bible says if a man say he's not a sinner, he is a liar, man. He is a liar. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, these camps go around talking about they keep the law. They don't keep the law, man. Like the Bible says, man, um, even they of the circumcision don't even keep the law. But want you to keep the law so that they may boast in your flesh. You see what I'm saying? Judah don't keep the law. This is why we're not saved off the deeds of the world. The Bible says we're going to become guilty before God, the whole world. If you think you're going to be saved off of the deeds of the law, man. We're going to be saved off, like the Bible says, his righteousness this time. Which is believing on his son Christ, man. And that's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 13, 39. And all that believe in him, meaning Christ, is justified from all things which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So you're not only just justified by the sacrificial law. He said all things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Romans 10 and 4 tells us. Um, Romans chapter 10 and verse 4 tells us for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You see, so you have to believe. But the law would have been our righteousness for us to keep the law in these end times. What? If we would have kept the covenant, Deuteronomy 6 and 24 through 25, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord your God, our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness, right? The law, the commandments. If, he said, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us this day, right? But we, our forefathers didn't keep the law. Our forefathers did not keep the law, Israel. The book of Jeremiah 16 and verse 11. Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, save the Lord, and have walked after other gods, have served them and have worshipped and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. That's why he had to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Jeremiah 31, verse 31, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That was with Moses, when he, Moses sprinkled the blood upon the people and, and upon the, um, you know, we, we enjoyed the covenant with God, man. Not that one he's saying, that's the, the works, which my covenant, they break. If we broke it, he said, why are you still desire to be under the law of Moses, Israel? Why? You're still under the curses if you desire to be under the law of Moses. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be in the spirit this time, man. Not all for the carnal flesh, Israel. He's going to put the laws in our inward parts. Right? That's why Paul said right here, Romans chapter 7, verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He didn't say of the works. He said of the inward man. You see what I'm saying? After the inward man. Right. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. There's nothing wrong with the law. It was wrong with our conscience that we can keep something that was spiritual. Why? Because the Bible says the flesh and and the uh, spirit is contrary to one another. The law is spiritual. There's nothing wrong with the law. So Christ didn't destroy the law. But I am carnal sold in the sin because of the conscience. Uh, Romans chapter eight and verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. That's why I'm saying if we working off the flesh, we, we cannot, you know, we couldn't keep the law, man. That's why he says in the book of Hebrews chapter nine in verse 14, it says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who do the eternal spirit because he was made a quickness spirit because Christ is the second Adam that was made a quickness spirit. The first Adam 
was made a, a living soul, man. The eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience, your mind from dead works to serve the living God. You see what I'm saying? It's through Christ's blood, man. This is his blood cleanses. When you be born again in this word, it cleans your mind. You see what I'm saying? Through the word. That's why he said in John chapter 15 and verse three, now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Right. And that's why he said it says in here in the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 119 and verse. Nine, it says, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed there according to thy word. Right. Taking heed there too according to thy word, because these these words is not ordinary words, Israel. John seven, uh, John chapter I know I'm jumping off topic, but this is the last verse and I'm going back into it. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh prophet nothing Israel. The flesh, if we work off the flesh, the flesh is murder, envy, hatred, variance. All that stuff is the works of the flesh. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh prophet in nothing. The words that I speak unto you, Israel, they are spirit and they are life. Right? These words are spirit and life, Israel. That's why. All right, let's go back to the book of Romans. Let's finish that off. Okay. Well, we finished that. Let's go over now to the book of Psalms chapter 83. All right, the works of the flesh. This is why we got to stay away from the flesh. We got to try our best to stay away from that flesh, Israel. Because the flesh, we not with the flesh, we're not entering the kingdom of heaven, man. We got to live through the spirit. That's why Paul said, man, walk in the fruit of the spirit, walk in the spirit and ye shall not desire the deeds of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? The fruit of the spirit is love and patience and meekness, man, and long suffering. That's the fruit of the spirit. The book of Psalms chapter 83, we got to strive. That's the, that's the, the, the fight. We got to, we got to stay away from that flesh, man. If we stay away from the flesh, we are saved through Christ by his blood and name, man, through the spirit. Right. I just want to get this last verse right here. And uh, that's why he said this right here. The book of Romans, chapter eight and verse four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Right. What? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see what I'm saying? That righteousness was in Christ. You see what I'm saying? That righteousness is Christ. Uh, the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he had made him to be sinful. He made Christ to be sin for the Israelites. For us who knew no sin. So like, for he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Christ ain't knew no sin, but he was faithful unto death because he was willing to die for the Israelites, man. He knew what he had to do. That's why it says in the book of Hebrews, he, it behooved them to be made like unto his brethren, that we might be made the what? The righteousness of God in him. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe. And all that believe of him are justified from all things which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. All right. So let's go back. Psalms 83. It says Psalms 83, and we want 1 through 5, Israel. Psalms 83, 1 through 5. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make atonement. Who is God's enemies? The whole world, man. The whole world is God's enemies. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, your people, the Israelites, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. This is what the heathen did, man. This is why we was destroyed so long, Israel, because they cut us off from being a nation for a while. They placed the fake Jews in the land. It was all set up by Satan, man. 
They are confederate against thee. They are confederate against the most high. Right? Right, so even well, I said the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with, with the habitus of Tyre, Asar also drank with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. Children of Lot is Ammon and Moab. Therefore, Ruth is not a, a, a Moabite, man, because even the Moabites even came together to knock God's people off. That's another cut. All right. These are all the people that came together, man, that, that knocked our names out of remembrance. So, of course, they're going to be God's enemies, the whole world. He's coming back to fight the world, man. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to be a John 316. It's going to be a John 316 for the Israelites. All right. And for the Gentiles that the Lord poured his spirit upon to get this truth. So we have to understand this, Israel. The most high have enemies. If he have if the world is his enemies, man, then what you think is his people? His people gonna have enemies too. Because we of the most high. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, and verse 10, Israel. This is very important. All right. Because the Most High knows who he know who hate him. We got to understand that he knows the world hate him. You see what I'm saying? Because what he says in his word is not going to bear witness with the people, man. With majority of the people in this world. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 10. And repay of them that hate him to their face. To destroy them. What did he just say? And repay of them that hate him to their face. The Lord ain't nobody to run. He's not scared, man. You got to understand, you're dealing with spiritual power, man, true power. The most high ain't running from no man. He come to your face and repay you to your face. People don't understand that. You see what I'm saying? Face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will not be slack to them that hate him. He will repay him to his face. You know how much... This is why I say the Most High has so many enemies, man. That's why he's coming back to fight like in the days of old. When his feet touch down on the Mount of Olives, is is war time because he, the Bible tells us, he's a man of war. He ain't changed. This is still his battlefield, man. We changed in technology, but the world to him is still the same as in the ancient times. That's why he's called the Ancient of Days. He don't change. He don't change, Israel. And for you Gentiles, he don't change. He's still coming back to fight you Gentiles. He's still coming back to fight you Gentiles. He, he's not coming back to round everybody up and hold hands. You have enslaved the children of God for a long time. You have eat the, the fruit of this earth. You have been dwelling in riches. Like Ezra said, I have gone here and through the heathen and I see that they flow in wealth. Nothing changed. There's nothing new under the sun. He seen that at that time that the nations were flowing in wealth and they still flow in the wealth today. And God's people is just shoved into the corner. So all this is salvation is for God's people because they need it. They needed this bread and this and this this living water to help them. man. That was the, this is their hope. The Lord is going to put them on top. He's going to give them the blessings and stuff this time. You see what I'm saying? Everything is going to be going back to its original position, man. The Gentiles are going back. The ones that's coming back to the land, that's why he said they're going to be servants and handmaids because that's what they were in the law. But he said in the book of Deuteronomy 28, if Israel don't keep the law, what will happen? The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt become down very low. That's what happened. It's still you still see it from ancient times to these end times. So he returned a captivity. All right. He said, they going to be the head and we going to be the tail. We should go to our enemies for one of all things. The most high is not changing. All right. So let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse five. Exodus. Chapter 20, and we want verse 5, Israel. 
Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Most high God is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see? You think the most high don't know who hates him, man? He knows the majority of the world hate him. They hate his son. They hate his people. You see what I'm saying? They know this is why Satan children is on top, man. This is why they reap in the benefits. This is why you have to be in Satan's image, the, the, the two genders together in order to be in power in this world. He's not letting no regular sons of Adams up in there. Adam and Eve seed up in power, man. Especially if you're an Israelite. This is, this is Satan's kingdom right now. And Esau, man. We got to understand this, Israel. We got to understand this. All right. So the Lord knows who hates him, man. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 9, Israel. He knows all things, man. <laughs> Lord knows all things. We can't deceive the Lord. That's why the Bible says the book of Nahum 1 and 7, and the Lord knows who trusts in him. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 9. Thou shalt not buy thine thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquities upon the fathers, upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. I had to read that again to you. That's why Christ said, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. All right. The Most High say the same thing in another verse to let you know he's serious. And it's, and it's not a game. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 81, Israel. Psalms, chapter 81. And we want verse 15. Watch this. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. All right. So the Lord, he got haters, man. People want to talk about, oh, you, you hate it because it is, or you hate it because. No, the Lord got haters, man. The most high got haters. You see what I'm saying? And they all going to be put to shame, man, when he come back. He going to repay everyone to their face, man. They're not going to be able to escape the Lord, man. That's why he said, you know what I'm saying? This is why I'm saying, like, our people are so caught up in wanting money and stuff like that and don't have no faith in the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? And just want to milk our people for what they have. The little bit of what they have. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not right. That's that's foul in my eyes, man. You don't charge your people for nothing. Your reward should be the kingdom. That should be your focus. You do this hard work and put in this hard work, whether it takes your life, man, for the Lord, man, because he's going to give you uh, the reward. We don't look for the reward down here. You see what I'm saying? That's why he even said here in the book of, um, I think it's the book of Zephaniah. Let's see if I can find it. The book of Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah. Uh, chapter 14 through 18. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near haste of greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. You see what I'm saying? So even the so-called tough people, man, in this world, man, in that day of the Lord, they're going to be like women, man. They're going to be like women in travail that's giving birth. Like he said, why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in travail? All right. Because nobody's really tough, man. Nobody's really tough. That's just a front. You see an image. Everybody on that day going to be like a woman shaken when they see the Lord come through, come through the, through the heavens, man, with them, with them chariots, man, and evade this world. It's going to be mind blowing. People are going to be bugged out of their mind. All right. They're going to be like women. The men is going to be like the women in that day. They ain't going to be no tough guy. That's what he said. I would cause the arrogance of the proud to cease, man, in that day. All right. He said, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Even the so-called tough guy is going to be crying. 
right? Even a so-called tough man is going to be crying. That day is a day of wrath, right? Of him holding out to punish this world for our wickedness. A day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness. And who's coming with that wrath of the almighty father? The lamb, man, Christ. And desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of what? Clouds and thick darkness. For those that have eyes to see it is to hear, we know these clouds are talking about chariots, man. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fifth cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be. Listen to this carefully. Neither their silver nor their gold, which is going to be money in these last days, shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of a jelly, for he shall make a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So the Lord is going to be terrible, man. The day of the Lord is going to be terrible, man. The silver or their gold is not going to be able to save them in the day of the Lord, man. Because even in the old times, when the Lord will bring, you know, terror upon the land of Israel, when we sin, man, he will come with terror. It be a, a terrible day of the Lord, man. It's going to be the same thing in these last days, a terrible day of the Lord. Nothing new under the sun. He, in the old times, he was terrible in the, to us in the land where we were sinning and being a wickedness. So he coming back the same way, this time for the whole world. All right. So we, we must understand this, Israel. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 10. The book of Numbers, chapter Numbers chapter 10 and verse 35. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered and let them that hate thee flee before thee. You see what I'm saying? The Gentiles always hated the Lord, man, and his people, even from ancient times. That's why they have a hate for the Lord's people, man. This is why they treated us like they did. And the Lord is going to recompense them. This is why he's going to recompense what they did. They ain't have mercy. He ain't going to have mercy. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 1, Israel. Psalms chapter 68 and verse 1. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. You see that? So we already know the majority of the world despise the word of the Lord, man. And that's why he said they're going to be destroyed. All right, because we know Israel, those that have eyes to see, man, we know that the Lord is no joke. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. See, the people in the churches, man, they're going to be very shocked when they find out how, how the what the Lord is going to do when he come back. You see what I'm saying? They looking for a white Christ and all of that and looking to hold hands with everybody at his coming. But they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Because that's not how he's coming back. He's coming back terrible. Very terrible. The Bible says. All right. That's why you Israelites that's in them churches need to come up out of there, man. You don't want to be partake in their, their, their iniquities. You don't want to be partake in their judgment. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 35 through 39. He said, to me belong a vengeance and recompense, right? Not to not to no man. The Lord is, is uh, vengeance belong to the Lord. To me belong a vengeance and recompense. You see that? Their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand. Right? And the things that shall come up upon them make haste 
for the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself and repent himself for his servants when he see if that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trust their right? Our people trust in these fake religions, man, and these these uh, devils, these idols of the heathen, because a lot of our people don't understand the truth. You see what I'm saying? Because at that time, man, they, they, <laughs> their gods, man, their, their, their idols ain't going to be able to save them from the day of the Lord, man. Before Their gods ain't going to, they're going to be calling upon their gods, man, when they see the Lord come through. And their gods ain't going to come and help them because there's none that could deliver out of the Lord's hand. There's none, no other God but the most high God of Israel. You see what I'm saying? So it ain't no one to, to match the creator, man. Satan ain't gonna be able to help nobody. He gonna be, he's gonna be out of it, man. The demons too. The Lord is coming for everybody, man. The all the wicked. He's coming for all the wicked, man. And the idols that the heathen is gonna be praying to in that day, they're not gonna be able to help because they're not real. They can't see, hear, smell, or taste or move, man. Those wooden stones they pray to, and our people that pray to them. Then their gods ain't gonna be able to help. None is gonna be able to save in the day of the Lord's wrath. He's the only true living God, the God of the Israelites. All right, Allah is not gonna be able to help. All right, which is Satan, Allah, all of them, Buddha, all of them is not gonna be able to save no one in the day of the Lord's wrath. Because there ain't no other God besides the Most High. All right. And he says, and he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices? Right. Even we were sacrificing in the land, man, until to, to high groves of images of the heathen, man. And that's why the Lord had to get and chase us out of the land, man. We was doing all type of wicked stuff in the land, just like he chased the seven nations of Canaanites out, Canaanites out and gave it to us. Because we supposed to be a righteous and holy people. The Lord did the same thing to Israel when we started being like the heathen in the land, which he told us not to do. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, right? Sacrificing our kids to Moloch, man, to Satan. People still doing the same thing today. It's nothing new under the sun. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. The Lord said to Israel, man, listen. Your gods in whom you trust, let them let them get up and help you, man, and be your protection. Because Israel, we know the Lord, our God, save us in a time of trouble and afflictions, man. Because we know we serve the be living God. You see what I'm saying? The one that's real. All right. So we know he's telling Israel, listen, let let your idols, let your God save you in a time of trouble when you cry out to me. That's why he said Jeremiah chapter 30. And I think verse 16, he says, why cries thou for thine affliction? He asks Israel that. Why are you crying in your affliction? You see what I'm saying? We want to cry upon the Lord and call upon him, man. But we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, do his will. We don't want to do what the Lord tell us to do, man. We don't even want to at least try in this last generation. That's why he said, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Right, so he says, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Right. We know he formed the light and created darkness. The most high, he's not evil. The most high is a righteous and holy and just, righteous judge in God, man. And loving and kindness God. But when we do iniquity and sin, the Lord become our enemies. He become he be we become the Lord's enemy, man. He comes after us. And whoever is in wickedness, then his his other side shows, man, that he has to repay the wicked, man. It's in his nature. He's too righteous and holy. He's not gonna let the wicked escape. He's not gonna quit the wicked, man. That's why he says there's no hope for the wicked. They're like the troubled sea tossed to and from. 
There's no hope for the wicked. That's why he said it ain't going. They never are going to exist ever again. You're not going to see Fifty Cent in them, man. You're not going to see these people in Hollywood and in power anymore in existence. They never going. They're going to cease from existing. That's why they have what they have now, Satan children. It is not for that long. This is what they getting, and they notice. All right, so. Like the Lord said, you know, he already broke the staff of the wicked and the power of the rulers. All right, so let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to start right there. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30. Let me see. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30 through 31. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. Right? He said that just now in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Right? That's why the Bible tells us, man. Through the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Right, and he says, "Fear him that cannot destroy the that can only destroy the body and not the spirit, man, not the soul. But fear him that can destroy both in hell, which is the Most High, because Satan, man, he can only destroy this flesh. You know that's why in the Book of Revelation, he, Christ said, "What and the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life." You see what I'm saying? So we must understand this, Israel. You know, this is real, man. This is real. It's not a game. It's real. It's not a game. You know what I mean? I'll fold this around just getting a little water. All right. Right, so we know, man, that the Lord is coming back very terrible, man. All right, let's go to the book of Isaiah 45 and 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, 45 and 7. 45 and 7, he says, What? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all things. Right? Because he is all powerful, man. He is the creator. So he has to control both sides. Okay? He created all things for himself, for his glory. Right? So he said, I created the, the wicked for the day of evil, man. You got to understand how the Lord work, man. He 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 can use the animals to 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 um to bring forth a judgment if he want to, man. Look in the book of Kings when those kids was mocking Elijah, man, because he had a bald head. And the Bible says two she bears came out of nowhere and two up the children. I think it was like 42 children, man. Because they were wicked kids, man. You see, the Lord, he don't have, he's not a respect of persons, man. If you wicked, you wicked. It don't matter if you're a kid or not. If you're wicked, you're wicked. Right? And them two she bears devoured them. Them children, man. Because they was mocking Elijah, his prophet, man. Told him that he had a bald head. Like, it was funny. You know what I mean? That wasn't funny. So the Lord showed them, like, all right, he controls the animals, man. All right? The Lord even got spirits. He created spirits just for different times and seasons and things that he need to use it for, man. You got the you got the spirits of vengeance, you know, death. He created all these spirits on his command. They would not disobey his word. He controls everything, Israel. That's why we ought to fear him and nothing else in this world. Okay. 
So he says, right? Let's read that again. He said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. He's letting you know the Lord don't sugarcoat nothing. Whoever don't like it, don't have to like it, man. He's still going to be I am that I am. He's still going to be him. You know what I'm saying? He don't care who don't like him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go to the book of um the book of Kings, first Kings chapter twenty two. You must really understand this, Israel. The book of first Kings, chapter twenty two, and we went nineteen to twenty three, Israel. Right, And he said, hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So the Lord controls all the spirits, man. They, they talking among themselves who going to go forth and do this. Commandment of the Lord And there came forth a what? A spirit And stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him And the Lord said unto him Wherewith? And he said I will go forth And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets And he said Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also Go forth and do so They can't disobey the most high The dark spirits or the light spirits Cannot disobey his commandment man. They can't Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put, right? The Lord, he, look, he take the credit for everything. He don't sugarcoat nothing. He's, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is a man of war, man. He, he's no joke. So he take he takes all the credit. He don't sugarcoat. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. You see that? The Lord controls everything, Israel. This is why we don't be afraid of nothing. There's no need to be afraid of the devil or demons or fallen angels or the Gentiles or even our own people. The Lord controls everything, man. You could be in a situation where, you know, look like, you know, somebody want to hurt you or something, man. The Lord has angels on standby, man, protecting you, Israel. They in the clouds, man. They among the skies and the chariots watching over us in these nations. You have to believe it, Israel. That's why the Lord, the Bible says, um, the angels of the Lord encamp in the the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear Him. You see what I'm saying? That's in the book of um Psalms chapter thirty four. All right, so we got to understand this, man. The Lord, it's angels walking around, man, taking on the parent. You don't know if you're walking past an angel, Israel. That's why the Bible says some some entertain angels unaware. You understand? It's it's real. It's real, Israel. But this world wants you to use your carnal mind so you can't see this with your spiritual eyes. The Lord has to wake you up. All right, let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter thirty nine. The book of Sirach, chapter thirty nine. And we're going to start at 23 to 35. No, 28 to 35. I says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. You see that? Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. Right? Their power and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts. Like I told you in the book of Kings with the bears. It was it was another incident. Incident. I think it was the book of um I think it was still the book of Kings where I know it was an Israelite guy, he died by I think a lion or something, killed him. The Lord sent that, man. The Lord controls all that. Teeth of wild beasts, man. How you you know what I'm saying? The even the Lord with the with Daniel, man, the lion's den, man. The Lord controls the animals. That's why he said when he come back, because right now they're, they're wild, you know, due to sin in the earth and stuff. That's why the Bible tells us he's going to make a covenant of peace with the animals when he come back. 
You know, children going to be able to pl play with their animals, man. He's going to make a covenant of peace with them also. All right. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and a sword punishing the what? Wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. Right. He created them and they know who the creator is. Therefore, from the beginning, I was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing. And all the works of the Lord are good. There is no evil work with the Lord, man. All his works are good. He know how to judge his creation. And he will give every needful thing in due season so that a man cannot say this is worse than that. For in time, they shall all be well approved. And therefore, praise ye the Lord with the whole heart and mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Right, because we know Israel how terrible it's going to be, man, that day. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, Israel. All right, the Lord controls everything. All right, he controls Hashatan, the demons, the fallen angels, the good angels, the light angels, the holy angels. He controls all of that, Israel. All right, the powers that be can't do nothing. Without the Lord knowing. Right? But we've been programmed and tricked to fear Satan and the devil and his demons. It was all trickery, deception. You want to fear the most high, man. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, Christ said. But are not able to kill the soul. And I was watching um I, I was watching this show called America Horror Story a little while back. And in it it was it was talking about the Antichrist that last season. And you know, that whole show is about witches and devils and stuff like that, but they make it look present good. Like I said, this is what they do. They put light uh, darkness before light and light before darkness. They turn everything upside down. They call good evil and evil good in this world. But in there, it was about the Antichrist being born and stuff and the apocalypse, right? And it was a scene that the Antichrist, the person that was playing, playing the Antichrist, uh, which is a tranny anyway, transgender like all of them in Hollywood, but he was playing the Antichrist, that person, and he killed, he killed this lady, right? And then her spirit was standing there. She was looking at her friend. And they they show the body on the floor, but the spirit standing there, right? And he burnt the spirit too, and it it evaporated. They just doing that to show you to make you think Satan is powerful like the Lord, man. Because they get it from this scripture right here. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both uh soul and body in hell, right? Because in that scene, he destroyed the body and the soul together. The uh, the Antichrist guy, they mock everything that the Lord of the Lord, man. You see what I'm saying? So people that seen that know what I'm talking about. All right, so don't fear them that can destroy the body, Israel, but not cannot destroy the soul, because Satan cannot do that. He only do that in imaginary shows like that, man. All right, let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs. 16 and 4, Israel. You know, fear the Lord, man. He can destroy both the body and soul in hell. He can ha have your body preserved in fire, man, for eternity. That's what, what's going to happen. You see what I'm saying? To the majority of the world. The book of Proverbs 16 and 4, Israel. The Lord have made all things for himself. Right. He created everything for himself. He ain't created everything for man. All right. This is why I say, I don't get why the Lord, you know, this and this. Bible says, who is thou that replies against God, man? Who is we to reply against the creator? He do what he want to do. Right. He's the one that the crafter that molded and created man. He created all things for himself, not for us. Okay, not for men, right? But we know that the Israelites are the Lord's. So he, the Bible tells us he created the world for our sake. You see what I'm saying? 
is everything in context. You gotta understand in levels and context, Israel. Okay? So the Lord have made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Right, he created the Israelites for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. He has a special day for the wicked, man. A special day for the wicked, Israel. Let's go to the book of Psalms 34 and 21. So he created the wicked. He made all things for himself and created the wicked for the day of evil. So you know the Lord has something stored up, something very terrible, man, for, for wickedness. The book of Psalms 34 and 21. He said, evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Right? Because we know this is why we are to stay strong, Israel. You're going to see the wicked ruling for, for, for right now, man. But the Lord is it's going to come a time. The Lord is going to return our captivity, man. He's going to return our captivity. The wicked ain't going to be ruling nothing no more. Because they're not even going to exist anymore. You see what I'm saying? So, don't covet, don't want what these devils have, man. In Hollywood and power. Don't want the money and the riches and the fame and the girls and all. Don't want that, man. Be happy with what you got, Israel. Because the Lord has promises stored up for us, man. That's going to wipe away our tears from our eyes and all the stuff we've been, our people been through. He has promises for the Israelites, man. Everlasting life and promises. This is why you have to choose, Israel. You want to walk this walk or you want this world. You can't do both. You want this world or you want the most, you want the most high of the kingdom, man. All right, let's go to the book of Psalms. Right? And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Because like I said, in this truth, Israel, the world is going to hate you, man. They're going to hate you. Your, your own people going to hate you, man. Your loved ones, your children, your parents, you know what I'm saying? They're going to hate you in this truth. You see what I'm saying? Because, like, for instance, the parents that's in it, the parents that believes in this truth, their kids is going to hate them. Right? Or if the kids is... Uh, in this truth, the parents are going to hate them and deliver them up. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand, you're going to lose people in this truth, man. If they're not in the truth with you, you're going to lose them, man. You got to be prepared for this. The book of Psalms chapter 2. And we're going to uh, start at verse 1 to 4. All right. The Lord said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. But watch this, verse 4. What is the Lord doing? Why did the powers that be and all them plotting what they're going to do to Israel and stuff like that? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. You see, the Lord is sitting in the heavens and laughing at this, man. Like, they can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nobody going to rise up against the Lord's people, man. And against his anointed Christ. Nobody's rising up against them. You know, they it's all they doing all that in vain, man. The Lord ain't going to allow that to happen. He's sitting in the heavens and laughing at the wicked, man. Right? Let's go to the book of Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 59 and verse 8, right? He's sitting in the heavens and laugh, laughing at them. Psalms 59 and verse 8. But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shall have all the heathen in derision. You see that? He's going to have them all in derision. He's going to have them all in derision, Israel. Let's go to the book of... Uh, let's go to the book of... Um, let me see. Right, the Lord is sitting there laughing at them, man. 
They can't do nothing to us, Israel. Because the Lord is protecting his people, man. They sit back daily and plotting against his people, man. But they can't do nothing. All right, let's read the book of our wisdom of Solomon, chapter four, verse three, all the way to uh, 20. But the multiplying broad of the ungodly shall not thrive, the Lord said, nor take deep rooting from bastard lips, nor lay any fast foundation. For though they flourish in branches for a time. Yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind, and through the force of winds, they shall be rooted out, man. Because the wicked ain't going to last that long, man. All right? They, you, we, they program us to think, like, if you ever look on a billboard or anything, right, and you see where it says, oh, this building is going to be ready in 2028 or 2030, they want you to think it's going to be that long so that you can keep doing wickedness, man. Because they know the Lord is going to pop, pop up like a thief in the night. They don't, they don't, can't tell you what time we're going to be here. They want you to, they're going to keep saying that. You know what I'm saying? Or a Hollywood movie producer, somebody say, oh, this movie going to be ready in 2025 or 2029. They doing that to deceive you so you can keep in wickedness so the Lord can creep upon you like a thief in the night. And through the force of all winds, they shall be rooted out. The imperfected branches shall be broken off. Their fruit unprofitable, not ripe to eat. Yeah, meat for nothing. The children begotten of unlawful beds are wit witnesses of wickedness against their parents in their trial. But though the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall uh, he be in rest. Right. If the righteous, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the people that's, dying, that's willing to die for the Lord's word, man, become martyrs. And 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 in this truth, you know what I'm saying, dying Christ. They at rest, man. The world is gonna think that it was all vain. If you died and, and you was in this truth, the world gonna think you died in vain for nothing. You did all this for nothing. But they don't know that you at rest, man, and the Lord got your back, Israel. That's why the Bible says, whether we live or whether we die, we are still the Lord's. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, right? You know, some people, when they be like, you know, people that, people that live long, you know what I mean? And they think that's honorable. You're like, oh, I lived this long. I lived that long. But that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hand to men. And in an unspotted life is old age. He pleased God and was beloved of him so that living among sinners, he was translated. He was tucking. Enoch and it was translated and taken. They're not in heaven, man. Nobody ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, which is the son of man, which is in heaven, man. All right. Nobody have ascended up to the throne of the father, man, but Christ. That's it. Being taken, meaning you're dead. Yeah, speedily was he taken away. Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. Right. The Lord said, uh, stay away from guile and deceit. For the bewitching of naughtiness uh, doth obs obscure things that are honest. And the warnings, the wondering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. Right. He being made perfect in a short time fulfilled the long time. Right. So. Even if you live, if you was in the Lord, man, and you died at a young age, the Lord is basically saying, man, you fulfilled a long time, though. Right. He being made perfect in a short time. You was made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time. So it's not about you living. Don't think that living long, Israel, meaning you're good. You could be taken out at a short age, man. And in this generation, a lot of us dying out early, man. At young ages. But the point is, a person that's younger can have more wisdom than a person that's in their 50s or 60s that been studying longer than them. The Lord can give that shorter period amount of person more knowledge than that person been studying for 60 years. So you can't only think because you see a person with gray beard and, and, and stuff like that, that they have, 
you know, knowledge, uh, could have more knowledge than a person that's younger that been studying. The Lord could open that younger person eyes up way more than that person. It took that 60 uh, year old person years to study to find out what he know. But a person that has been young, he could have got that quick. Just like King Solomon, man, he was the wiser of all. He was a kid. He was young when he got all that wisdom. He desired wisdom and not money, man. That's why the Lord gave him that wisdom. All right. For his soul pleased the Lord. Therefore, hasteth he to take him away from among the wicked. Right. That's why Paul was talking about being uh, absent in the body and present with the Lord, man. All right. But you, you, you know, you want to be here because you want to hope and pray you could be here so you can see these wonderful works and signs and effects that the Lord is going to do. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to be taken. Right. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither lay they up in their mind this in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his what saints with his people, man. And that he have respect unto his what chosen Thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living. Look at that. Like the Bible says, we are going to judge angels, man. And youth that is soon perfected the many years and old age of the unrighteous. For they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what God and his counsel have decreed of him. Right. Because the Lord controls our length and time upon his earth, man. He knows our times, years, and days upon his earth. He have created it that way he know how long each person is going to live upon the earth and how they're going to die and and what's going to happen he already know he declared the end from the beginning and to what end the lord has set him in what safety right you could be in this truth man you died and you know you you still the lord the lord got you in safety man but the world gonna think you went in misery but they don't know the counsel of the lord they shall see him and despise him, but God shall what? Laugh them to scorn. And they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall. Let me see. For he for he shall rend them, right? Torn, rip them and cast them down headlong that they shall be speechless and he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste and be in sorrow, and their memorial shall perish. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear, and their own iniquity shall convince them to their face. Right? Like he says here. Let me see if I could grab that. In the book of Second Edris. Hey, like he said here. Verse, let's start at verse 62. Second Edges chapter 16, verse 62. Yeah, uh, yeah, the spirit of almighty God, which made all things in search of our all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he know of your inventions and what he think in your hearts. Right. We can't deceive the Lord, man. We could we could trick men, but we can't deceive the Lord. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, have the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. Right. Like he says in the Bible, man, it says that um, like he would cast you down into the congregation. Right. Sixty five. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be what? Ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What will ye do? Or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? Right. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Right. So I was just bringing that out, man, because, you know, it's very important is where we must understand this, man. Let's go to Psalms 37 and 13. Psalms 37 and 13. Right. The Lord shall laugh at him for he see that his day is coming. Right. You may be seeing people, man, that that's why the Lord is big on. He said, bless your enemies and bless those that persecute you. Why? Because the Lord going to send hot coals of fire upon their head. You see what I'm saying? This is why he said, 
bless your enemies and stuff. We are not to be carnal and hit them back and fight them back. We turn out of the cheek, man, because we know the Lord is going to get them. We are not to be carnal in this captivity. You see what I'm saying? Back in the days, we were tough people and we went to war, but we in the land of our captivity. That's why he said, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We The, the Lord is going to avenge us when he comes back to all of our adversaries and enemies. Right? But the Lord shall laugh at him, right? Whoever the wicked that's trying to destroy us and all those that hate us, for he sees that his day is coming. The Lord already know that these people day is coming, man. The wicked day is coming. He's seen it already. He declared it. He know he's telling us. To, that's why he said, wait ye upon me. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may pour upon the kingdoms of um, the kingdoms, my indignation. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. That's why he tells us to wait upon him a lot. Because he see the ones that hate us and all that. Their day is coming, man. Their day is coming. So that's why I don't worry about people that is rich and have money and all that. They're not going to have that forever. Their day is coming where he's going to repay them, man. They're not going to have that. Don't want what they have. Be thankful for what you got, Israel. All right. The Lord shall laugh at them for he see his day is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, man. All right, let's go to the book. Of Psalms 37, 32, the wicked watch of the righteous and seek to slay him. All right. But well, we know the Lord God is Israel. If you believe, man, it's all go back to your belief. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, Israel. Book of Deuteronomy. Uh, 32, we left off at verse 39. Let's go to 40 to 42. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, it's the Lord, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. Okay. And I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Okay, the Lord is going to revenge his en he's going to re he's going to repay his enemies, man, when he come back. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 34. Book of Isaiah chapter 34. And we want 1 to 10. That's why he said, "Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it, even the animals, the Lord said, come forth and hear what he's about to say. Verse two, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. He been delivered them to the slaughter. He declared it already. He already won. He been won. We just planned it out. Right. That's why they getting their carnal missiles and weapons ready to fight the Lord when he come back, man. And you can't fight spiritual power. It's not going to do nothing to him. He he let them build their technology up for years to fight the Lord, man. That's going to be the great day of the Armageddon. It's going to be shaken in the land of Israel, man. The Lord is going to destroy them. They got carnal weapons. Right? He already what? Delivered them to the slaughter. He going to be terrible to them. They think the M16s and grenade launchers and jet fighters is going to stop the Lord, man. That's go it's not even going to touch him or scratch him. He going to take the earth in that day, man. He going he going to win. It's going to be a battle for the earth. He already won. He going to once he destroyed it, he going to take the earth. The earth is already his, man. This is what I'm saying. The world don't understand what's going on because Satan have blinded the minds of the people. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their caucuses and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. 
and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down and the leaf falleth as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a felling, falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come upon a dumia. Right. He's coming. When he come back, he coming for Esau, man. He coming for Esau and the nations upon a dumia. After all this time, it don't matter. A thousand years went on. He know where Esau at. He know where he hiding. Upon a dumia, upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra. Right. The same people whom the Lord have indignation upon forever, which is Esau and a great, which is not the white man and a great slaughter in the land of Adumia. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. Right. Because that's the Lord's land over there. Who the Ashkenaz synagogue of Satan, the Gentiles are um, trotting down right now, claiming to be his people. Right. He said he got a controversy for Zion. That's how the Bible said he going to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. And none shall pass through it forever more, uh, through it forever and ever. Right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah 63. Isaiah chapter 63. Uh, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1 through 6. Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel. This is the Lord, man. Christ traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Who going to be able to stand on the day of the Lord, man? Even their carnal weapons and guns ain't going to do nothing. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Right. That's all the blood that's going to be sprinkled from the Lord when he come back, man, upon the wicked, upon this world, the, the heathen. All their blood going to be sprinkled upon his garment. It's going to look like he was treading in the wine fat. I have trotting the wine press alone and of the people, there was none with me. For I would tread them, for I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The redeemed is the Israelites. He's coming back for his purchased possession, which he purchased with his blood upon the cross, man. Upon the tree. He died for the Israelites and redeemed that land back. And I looked, and there was none to help. Who's going to help? He said he looked, and there was none to help. Of, of all the terrible judgment he was giving the world. He was destroying them. He was looking to see if anybody can help. Ain't nobody going to deliver the, out of the Lord's hands. That's why Christ said none can pluck out my father's hands. There's none to deliver. The people, idols and all of that, they're going to be calling upon them. And they're not going to be able to help. Because they don't, they're not real, these idols. These wooden stone gods, man. They're not going to be able to save. And I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. The Lord said his own arm brought salvation unto him. In my fury, it upheld me. And I would tread down the people in my anger and would make them drunk in my fury. And I would bring down their strength to the earth. All right. So this is what it is, man. The Lord... The Lord ain't playing, man. The Lord ain't playing when he come back to Israel. Let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 1 and 4. He's not joking around. This is why we want to try to get right with the Lord right now. 
But too many our people and stuff is worried about their life. You see what I'm saying? Which is that's why he said he that try to save his life is gonna lose it. But he that loses his life for my name's sake shall find it. People gonna be trying to save their life, man. Because people just worry about their life right now in the moment and they don't realize the eternal punishment, man. The book of Malachi, chapter one and verse four. Where, where, my fellas, read one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I loved you. The Lord said he loved you, Israel, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, where has thou loved us? Right? We ask the Lord, when has he loved us? The Lord did so much for us, man. We was ungrateful. Was not Esau's Jacob brother, saith the Lord. Yet I love Jacob and I hated Esau. Lord even say he hated Esau, man. But people will say, oh, nah, God don't hate, man. God don't hate. He just all love. You see what I'm saying? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, if we are, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. And y'all shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will, will, will be magnified from the border of Israel. You see? So the Lord have wrath and indignation upon Esau forever, man. That's why he's going to destroy Babylon the Great, where Esau is hiding at. Which is over there in Mecca, Arabia, man. He's going to destroy Babylon the Great. The Great Whore, man. That sit upon many waters. They over there worshiping the cube. Right? People over there, the people, when they worship, they look like the waters, man. The people are the waters. The Bible tells us in Revelations, the water is the people. It's not America, all right, Statue of Liberty sitting upon the water. That's not what it's talking about. Babylon the Great is not America. Egypt is America. All nations is Egypt. Babylon the Great, that's why the Lord, the Bible says in Revelation, the Lord remembered Babylon to give her the cup of his fury. He ain't forget, man. They over there worshiping that stone. He, the one that brought them over there, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He made all nations drink his his cup, man, of his wrath, like he told Jeremiah. Make all the nations drink. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah 3 and 8. All right? If you haven't seen my video about Mystery Babylon exposing Esau, check it out. I talk all about where is our mystery Babylon and where Esau is at? The book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. He said, Therefore wait ye upon me, save the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. The prey is the nations, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Do you understand how long the Lord been waiting to punish the heathen? He just been building up wrath and wrath and wrath and wrath. And he's going to come down terrible upon this world. That's why he's going to come terrible. Let's go to the book of Joel chapter three. And who's coming with that wrath? We know Christ. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people, right? Which we know here, the Lord is not going to talk and say, please give me my people back. He's not going to say it like that. He's going to do it by what? The book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15 to 16. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Right. To render his anger, the angels in them chariots to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So we know what he's talking about in the book of Joel when he said the Lord will plead with all flesh by fire and by his sword, Israel. He's not doing no talking. All right.
All right. And I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is in Jerusalem, and will plead with them there by fire and his sword there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they scattered among the nations and part of my land. And they have cast lots for my people, right? Sold us into slavery, have given a boy for the and sold the girl for wine that they might drink. This is why Ham could never be forgiven for selling the Israelites, man. All right. The Lord is still going to recompense them. Yeah, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, the Hamites, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye, rec will ye render me a recompense? The Lord said, will you pay me back for all you did? And if you recompense me, the Lord says, swiftly and speedily will I recompense, return your recompense upon your own head. He don't want the apologies and stuff. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried in your temples my goodly pleasant things. Right. All the stuff we gave to the Lord in tidings, the gold, right? Nebuchadnezzar did the same thing that time when he came and uh, burnt Jerusalem and stuff. The Chaldeans and them, they came, he came and burnt Jerusalem, took us in captivity. He went in the temple and took the Lord's things too. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, which is the white people, man. That ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them, which is all nations, and return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. They're going to say, not God, not my God. He don't do this. Not the most high. No, he don't do this. This is what they say in church because they don't accept him as he is. They don't accept his word. They go off of what man tell them instead of going to the scriptures and seeing if the things is true. Of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians to a people far off, for the Lord have spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. The Lord said to proclaim this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Right? The Lord is coming back to fight the world, man. All right? He's telling them to wake up all the mighty men, gather everything they got in this carnal world because they're going to need it on the day of, of, of the Lord, man. That day of Armageddon is going to be terrible to this world when the Lord come. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up and beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks and the spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Right. He's calling them out. The Lord ain't running. He's a man of war. Right. The world in here, they go through wars and stuff like that, right? They so-called tough people, tough nations. America is tough. The Lord is calling these nations out. He said, let the weak say I am strong. That's why they say we army strong and all of this, right? So the Lord is telling you to come on down and let's see if you your, your word is true. Let's see how strong you is. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened, be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Like in the book of Revelations. That, that harvest was ripe. Right? Come get ye down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitude, multitudes, all those armies coming up to battle the Lord, man, and to get destroyed in the valley of Jehoshaphat in these last days. In the valley of decision, it's going to be a day of decision. Who's going to take this earth? Who's going to take that land? The Lord is going to destroy them. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. That day is the day of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. He didn't say the world. He said he's going to be the hope of his people. The people that is thrown in the back, the people that is thrown in the ghettos, the people that is thrown in the bottom of the barrel that is low in society, the people that is cursed, the people that... They kill in the streets and shoot down like dogs. The people that's in poverty, the people that need the bread, the living water, the people that have been despised and hated in all nations, you so-called Negroes. He's going to be your hope in that day, Israel. 
and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. He's not in all nations. He is your God, Israel. My holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be wet holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Right, Jerusalem ain't going to be trodden down by the Gentiles no more. All right. So I'm going to start right here. I'll see y'all back on part three. Okay. On that note, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the most high God of the Israelites, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of the Israelites, the Holy One that sits in heaven in truth, righteousness, and justice, the only true king that's going to reign over the earth, Jesus Christ, and his word and uh, wisdom and son, Jesus Christ, who was made flesh to die for the nation of Israel, to re redeem them back to becoming one nation, um, one kingdom again, because they were divided into two nations and two kingdoms. But the Lord, through the blood of Christ, he have reconciled them back to the father and reconciled them back to becoming one. OK, that's what it was about. And the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. All right. On that note, I love all my people, man. I love you Israelites. I, I love y'all, man. And we in this together. All right. And to you Gentiles, man, like I said, keep seeking the truth. Cleave to an Israelite and learn the word of the Lord. I see y'all in part three. Shalom.